I was really out of focus for that whole video. Hey guys, it's Lou. Welcome back to my channel. For this week's video, we're doing a sit down video. It has been a minute. I have been doing a lot of vlogs, which I'm pretty sure I mentioned in my previous vlogs, just how much I've been enjoying it. With my previous schedule, it was just a little bit easier to film a bunch of little clips and then put them together at the end, but I have time. And I was really excited to actually be able to sit down with you guys today and just talk face to face. Well, face to camera, but I know you guys are there. Today, we are going to be talking about White tree frogs. This has been highly requested, and honestly, it's about time I do an updated White tree frog care video. A lot of my care has changed when it comes to White tree frogs, so today we are going to do a full care guide. White tree frogs originate in Australia, Indonesia, and New Guinea and they are typically about three to five inches. Their lifespan might actually come as a little bit of a shock to you. Their lifespan can be about 16 to 25 years, averaging about 10 to 15 years in captivity, just kind of depending on the care they receive as well as any underlying health issues. But be prepared that if you do get a white street frog, that they can live quite a long time. They are fairly docile, which makes them a very popular species, especially for newcomers to the hobby. I personally would recommend them to anyone who is looking into getting amphibians and is looking for a little bit of an easier frog to take care of. Again, they're super docile and they're quite hardy and tolerant of different conditions. One thing to keep in mind about white street frogs is that they are nocturnal, meaning that they are going to be active during the evening and most likely when you are asleep rather than during the day. So don't be alarmed if you find your white street frogs just sleeping all day. That is very normal. One of the really neat things about white street frogs is they come in a variety of morphs or colors or whatever you want to call it and the colors can range anywhere from a pale green to an olive green. There's blue, there's yellow, some have blue eyes, some have spots. There's a huge variety meaning that there's probably a frog out there for everyone. As I mentioned before they are quite docile which means you can handle them. I wouldn't recommend doing it too too often but you definitely can take them out. Just make sure that you are washing your hands. It can take in the oils from your skin through their skin actually. So you wanna make sure that your hands are either super clean or that you are using some form of plastic glove. When it comes to their actual enclosure, I like to say about a 20 gallon or a 18 by 18 by 24 is a good size for anywhere from two to three adult frogs. Although three might be pushing it just a little bit. Once you start adding more frogs, you're going to want to add 10 gallons per frog. Another great enclosure size, especially if you're just getting one frog, is an 18 by 18 by 18 exoterra. I'll give you guys a little bit of an example. My Cuban tree frog is in the 18 by 18 by 18, and then my white tree frogs are in a 18 by 18 by 24, and I have two white tree frogs in that enclosure, and it seems like they're doing quite well in that size. You want to make sure that the enclosure is not entirely screened, but rather a glass or a plastic. That way it can hold in that humidity. They do require a little bit higher of a humidity than your average room humidity. If that makes sense, you want to keep them at around 60 to 80 percent. So having that glass or plastic really keeps that humidity in when you do mist them, which I recommend misting them about one 
one to two times a day. The lid and doors should be locked because they can and probably will escape if given the chance. An important thing for their enclosure is providing many different hiding spaces for them. This is through the use of different decorations. You can either go the live planted route where it'll be a little bit more of a bioactive enclosure, which a bioactive enclosure is just a self-sustaining enclosure with live plants, a cleanup crew, and all of that good stuff. Or you can even use fake decorations as well. Just make sure it's not too sharp to reduce any sort of injuries. As for a substrate, it really depends on what you feel the most comfortable with. You can use a amphibian safe soil or moss, or you can use what I like to use which is just paper towel. Paper towel holds in the humidity quite well and also is just easily replaceable. I like to clean my frogs enclosures and replace the paper towel once every three days. They are quite messy. Frogs are messier than you may expect. In their enclosure, you're also going to want to make sure there is a fresh source of water. I have a water dish in there where I change their water at least once a day, sometimes two, depending on how messy they are because they like to poop in it. Water that you're using both for misting the enclosure and for drinking water or soaking water in the water dish, you want to make sure it is dechlorinated. There is a product called Reptisafe, which you can add to your tap water, which makes it safe, like the product says, for your white tree frogs, and I highly recommend looking into getting that. Lighting is a situation that I have changed my mind on over the years of owning frogs. Initially, I didn't really see any sort of benefit in UVB, but now that I have UVB in my frog enclosure, I see a huge benefit, and I actually see my frogs using the UVB light quite a bit during the day. The UVB that I'm currently using is the Arcadia Shade Dweller Kit. I find that this is really great for helping frogs grow especially and just maintaining healthy bones and bodies. As for heating, you want to keep their hot side of their enclosure at about 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit and you can do this using a ceramic heat emitter as well as a thermostat. They could theoretically do well in just room temperature as well, but I definitely recommend looking into a ceramic heat emitter and thermostat. When it comes to feeding frogs, it definitely changes depending on their age. For example, babies and juveniles should be eating about every single day and just about as much as they can eat in 30 minutes, whereas adult frogs you're feeding more in the two to four day range. And what you're frog eats really depends on what's available in your area. My frogs are a little bit picky and when I say my frogs I really just mean pesto. He will only eat crickets. He hates worms, he hates the thought of worms, he hates the way they look and probably hates the texture and that's why he won't eat them but I respect that. He knows what he wants and so I will give him what he wants. Relish, on the other hand, will eat pretty much anything I put in front of him. Again, what you feed them is really gonna be dependent on what's in your area as well as what your frog is willing to eat. So it can range from crickets to super worms, mealworms. You can even add some extra tasty treats like butter or wax worms. One thing to keep in mind about feeding your frogs is you do wanna dust with calcium at least once a week. You can buy the calcium from your local pet store or online. Another thing to keep in mind about their food is that it does in fact have to be live insects. You cannot use dried insects unfortunately unless it's an emergency because dried insects just don't have that same nutritional value as live ones do. And when you do buy your live insects, 
at home, you're going to be wanting to gut load them so that they have the nutrition needed that when your frog eats that insect, they're getting that nutrition as well. I'm quite fortunate because we really love vegetables in this house, so I'm able to use my veggie scraps and just give those to the insects, but there are commercial diets that you can actually buy to gut load your feeders, and that is something that you can look into if you prefer that method. Another thing I really want to talk about is doing health checks on your frogs. I find that this is really important just so that you can ensure that your frog actually is healthy. There's quite a few ways that you can do this. First is keeping a monthly log on how much your frogs weigh. You can buy a little kitchen scale and then once a month just give your frogs a quick way and write it down. When you're seeing your frogs every day, it's a little bit harder to notice any sort of weight difference. So having that log is a great way to check if they're losing or gaining weight. As for actual health checks, I personally like to do it daily, but you can do it once a week, once every few days. Take your frog out and just give them a quick little once over. Make sure there's no wounds, so their skin is clear, their eyes are clear, their nose is clear, there's no discoloration on them. Um, although it is important to note that they most likely will change kind of the color of their skin throughout the day depending on the heating and lighting and all of that good stuff. You also wanna make sure that they have a really strong feeding response and that they are active during the night. Again, during the day, don't worry about it too much. They're just going to be sleeping and resting for their nighttime activities. One question I see a lot in my comments is where the heck do you buy white street frogs? And again, this really just varies on where you live some great options are going straight to a breeder. That way you can communicate with them and ask any questions you have. Make sure they're captive bred and not wild caught to avoid a higher chance of parasites and all of that nasty stuff. And also it's just not super ethical. So definitely look for a captive bred frog. Also look at adopting a frog, local buy sell groups or exotic groups on Facebook or other Websites might have frogs up for adoption. Another option is to find a reputable exotic store in your area, whether it's online or in person. And just ask lots of questions. Make sure that you know where their frogs are coming from, how they care for their frogs, what they're feeding their frogs, just to make sure that you're getting it from a reliable and reputable source. I think it goes without saying that white street frogs are either going to be a really, really great pet for you or they're not gonna be a great pet for you. And another factor that kind of goes into that is just how loud they really are. Pesto is as loud, if not louder, than my dogs, and he croaks pretty much every single night. He doesn't croak all night long, but there are definitely specific hours that I call the croaking hours, and it's quite loud. So that's something you wanna keep in mind, especially if you're living in an apartment or you're living with other roommates. Make sure that they're okay with it because they can be quite loud. But that's not to say that all frogs are going to be loud. Females are typically a little bit more quiet and Relish, who is also a male, doesn't croak quite as much as Pesto and his croaks are significantly quieter. Overall, I think white tree frogs make a really great pet, especially if you're just getting into amphibians because they are a little bit more tolerable of different conditions. They're hardy, they're a little more docile, but keep in mind that they're not the right pet for everyone. But that is pretty much it for this week's video. If you guys have any questions or you feel there's something I missed, please feel free to leave that down below in the comments and I will definitely get back to you. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get updates on when I post my next video. If you want to keep updated with my life as well as all of my pets, all of my social media is always linked down below and I will see you guys next time for another video.